Okay, hi moms. I'm back with another video. It's been quite a little while since my last one. Um, I believe, I want to say it was long before the Christmas break. So um, I'm about due and I'm really happy to be sharing with you our mid-year review. So I want to go over um, my three elementary students' top favorite picks um, for what they're working on currently. And then I'm going to talk about their least favorite picks. And then I'm also going to throw in a couple of my own picks that I'm just very much enjoying for them. And so that is going to be how this video goes. And then at the end, I'm also going to share our family read alouds because I'm very excited about that. This is our first year using family read alouds and it's going very well. Um, so I want to reveal what we're reading and then also give you um, a nice little development that's coming up that's in relation to the family read aloud. So let's get into it. Um, if you followed my blog or my videos by now, you know that I have three elementary school children, um, grades fourth, third, and first. And um, so those are the grades I'm going to be focusing on. Um, right now we are working into the second part of our school year as a homeschool that is not partnered with a charter school anymore. Um, I've charter schooled um, and homeschooled with my three youngest for the past six years, I believe, and we're finally not with a charter school. There was a lot that went into that. I have a blog. Um, that tells you more in description what that means, but I'm very excited because ever since we've cut ties with the charter school, um, I've really been able to work through a lot of the curriculum that I hadn't been using because we were supposed to be hitting certain requirements. So I'm free to make my own plans. I'm free to make my own lessons. And, um, it's just been really fun to experiment with a lot of our different curriculum we hadn't touched on yet. Before I get into it, I do want to talk about how I do that. So because we're experimenting with so many curriculums, it's impossible to fit into one day um, all of these different workbooks and resources that we're going through. And so I've picked up using a loop schedule. Um, this is an example of one of my loop schedules that I have set out for electives. So on here I have three different loops and I just go week one, week two, week three. So Monday geography, Tuesday art, um, Wednesday typing, Thursday science, Friday subscription box, which could be any number of science experiments, any history, mini units that come in a subscription box. I have a ton of those that we're trying to get through. Um, and then the great thing about the loop schedules is if we don't get finished with a subject in one of those days, I literally just um, hit where we left off. So if Monday we hit geography, Tuesday we hit art, Wednesday we ran at a time and we didn't hit um, typing, then Thursday I would do typing, and then Friday science, next Monday subscription box, and so on. So it's really easy to loop and make sure we're hitting all those subjects and my children like it because they're not getting stagnant on one elective. Um, they're able to really process through and not get bored of anything. So that is how I'm working through our curriculum currently. So now that I've spoken about that, let's get into, let's get into our fourth grade um, picks. So starting with my son's least favorite pick, he chose the Write It Out series. This is level C. Um, I think the reason he's not really digging this is because it's written for a classroom in mind. So a lot of the um, assignments are focused with needing several students in order to complete. They're supposed to swap their papers um, and edit and revise each other's papers. They're supposed to like run ideas off of each other. So it's just very teamwork oriented and while me and him can make it work with just the two of us, I think it's just a little bit frustrating for him to not be able to do some of the assignments as um, intended. So, um, and then with that also, I think some of the directions are 
can be a bit vague. And so I'm having to come in here and really run down like how he's supposed to be doing certain assignments. And so it's just a little bit more intensive on my part um, where he's a very independent learner. He's able to just open and go. Um, I like to be able to be a little bit more hands off with him. And so this isn't super hands off. I am having to give him the instruction and help him work through it. So I think that's why this is his least favorite on top of the fact that he just doesn't love writing. Although um, we have a couple writing options that both he and I are very enjoying right now. So I'll talk a little bit about that in just a sec. Um, so least favorite, the Write It Out series, that is level C. Okay, this is his first favorite choice of um, curriculum that he's been doing this year. This is by The Good and Beautiful. It's called Mental Math Math Mysteries. And so how it works is literally every day he comes and he does one of the tiny little lessons. Um, there's questions on one side he gets to view this side and then I have it flipped over so he can't see the answers on the other side but so he just comes in here and all mentally tells me the answers to all these problems I think he just loves that he's like a math whiz so he just runs through this really easily and he's just loving going through these little 30 to a minute um lessons that take just a quick moment in a day that he gets to kind of um, work with me and really just have fun. He loves math, he's good at math. So this was his favorite choice. Um, another one of his favorite choices is his second favorite choice was this. It was just actually an elective, um, but it's called Creating Line Designs. And this is really cool. Um, when he first started this, he was actually really bad with a ruler. He wasn't able to do his lines very straight and he would get frustrated. And over time, he's gotten a much better line drawing. Um, he's just much better at drawing his lines. And so this was in the beginning, you can see he's kind of um, getting off there, but since then he's learned a really firm grip on his ruler, makes the straightest lines, and he just loves coming in here and completing all these. His first grade sister actually really loves it too, and so they're both working through this, and I see us moving into the book two and the book three and so on in the future. Okay, let's get into my mom picks. So basically these are the choices that I've picked that I've just personally really loved for him, whether it is because I see him just progressing through it very well, learning a lot from it, and um, just gaining a lot of new wisdom from these next resources I'm gonna show. The first one would be Evan Moore, and we really love Evan Moore product. I feel like every Evan Moore product we've used has been a big hit in our family. Um, this one in particular is literally just a daily language review. It could be grammar, spelling, um, punctuation, going over different things like similes, metaphors, homophones, and so forth. Um, it's just a really quick um, four question thing per day that he can come in here and fill out and it's just been really nice to know that he's going to open this first thing in English and finish that. Occasionally it'll have him write a paragraph so that's really helped him in his writing because he hates to write and this is just sprinkled throughout um, in a way that doesn't make it feel too burdensome for him. So um, this is one of my favorite picks. The next favorite pick I've talked about on my blog. Um, I think I did make a separate video about Michael Clay Thompson um, in general. And I'm just really happy with the Grammar Island level. Um, so he worked through the Grammar Island books. And then these are the Practice Island. So now he gets to put into effect all of what he learned about the eight parts of speeches in Grammar Island. And so how this works is he comes every day, and I won't show you the sentences he's already worked through, 
Um, but he would come in here, read Sam gave her a bucket of fish and he's gonna label the parts of speech. So whether noun, adjective, verb, pronoun, prepositions, um, I'm forgetting, there's eight of them. So he's gonna do that. Then he's gonna be able to identify the subject of the sentence, whether there's direct objects, um, if there's any action verb predicates, and so on and so forth. And then he's also gonna be able to identify um, the clauses and what makes the, um, the sentence, any part of it, a clause, um, so on and so forth. So I have my little notebook here that gives me all the answers. So then we can just meet up with each other and go over to make sure he's identified all the parts of speech correctly. So this has been a really fun thing. He just opens it and does about one to two each day um, that we're working on Michael Clay Thompson. Um, another one of my favorite picks is this. I just picked it up this year. It's by Logos. I had never heard of this, but I heard from a mom who um, had tried IEW with their kids and she didn't really love how intensive it felt for her. And so she, um, discovered this and she just felt like it was really easy for her sons to pick up and work more independently from her and so I decided I'd give it a try and I really love it we've done about three lessons and his writing with this have been amazing so basically it's teaching you how to outline a piece of um, resource that you read so um, in this case, it's the Aesop's Fables, and so he's going to read this, and then what he does is he lists the characters out, and then they highlight some vocabulary. He has to paraphrase the definitions for what these words mean, and then there's number one through nine that you come in here and you read. Okay, so number one is the first sentence. He's going to loose paraphrase it in his own words what that sentence is talking about. And then once he goes through all of that, I then detach the story that he read initially, and he has to rewrite the story using just his outline as um, help. So this is a really great way to get your kids to learn how to outline and how to use the outline in their writing. Um, so it's just like a good organizational tool to get their thoughts straight and then to be able to put it into writing. And he's really enjoying these. Um, so we've gone like, we've done, like I said, about three of them, but I can just tell I'm gonna love this for him because he's having such good progress with it already. So that is my other mom pick. And then last but not least um, is we, have picked up a different history since leaving our charter school. Um, I've been able to really put back in a lot of that like religious content that I desperately needed and I've made it a family subject. And so um, this has been really fun because him, his third grade sister and his first grade sister are working through this all together. And we're just enjoying coming in and reading the short little stories about each um, time period. So we got through Let's Hide Away in Ancient History. And I didn't say before, this is actually the Winter Promise Hideaways in History series. So there's four parts. The first part being Let's Hide Away in Ancient History, which we did. And then the Let's Hide Away in Medieval, Medieval Times is where we're at right now. And I think we are right about here. I like to pair this with YouTube to give them video visualization of what we're reading. So for instance, since we just read Viking, I then go on YouTube and I'm like Viking life for kids. And then we'll go through and watch a couple really short videos just to talk about Viking life more in depth. And we're just really having fun with this. I love everything about this. Um, so I'm, I would highly recommend the Winter Promise Hideaways in History series, um, especially if you want a family subject. Okay, so that is it for my fourth grade picks. Um, let's move into third grade. So 
My daughter's least favorite pick was the Life Pack. Um, this is by Alpha and Omega Publications. And I don't even want to say that I dislike this because I don't at all. I actually love um, how it's really easy for her to come sit down and just read, fill out the questions, do the easy activities, um, so on and so forth. So it's just like a no-brainer she can come to and work independently. Um, however, my daughter hates to work. <laughs> this particular daughter hates to work independently. Um, so I think that's why this is her least favorite. So we've since then, um, ditched these little life packs. I want to say there's about 10 in one year if you're using it as, you know, um, you know, lists out throughout the year. Um, but we've ditched this and we've all moved into the Winter Promise Hideaways in History. So this was her least favorite pick. Um, her most favorite thing right now isn't really a curriculum, but it's a tool. So she's discovered the Abacus. And this has been really great because she struggles with math so much. But I think ever since she's been able to just easily pull out these beads and visualize the numbers, um, it's helped her so much to get through, especially word problems. Um, so I highly recommend the Abacus. This is the Right Star AL Abacus. There are worksheets that come with it, but thus far we've really just been using it as like a supplement tool to go along with her um, math items. Now I'm working through a lot of different math curriculums with her because we're unsure what she actually likes. So I'm hoping that by looping all the curriculums that, sorry, looping all the curriculums I have, um, we will then be able to really iron out what we want to use going forward um, when she starts fourth grade in the fall. So this is her favorite thing right now. Um, she also picked out this Evan Moore real world writing for today's kids. Um, so we just started this, but I like that it was um, already her favorite thing. Um, basically, we just had a chance to talk about journaling and how it can be literally anything she wants to write about, whether it's something that happened that day, how she's feeling, what she's looking forward to, any like hopes and dreams, whatever it is that she wants to do. So we've kind of gone through all of this and we talked about she can write, um, you know, make drawings in her journals, which she is such a doodler. So she... <laughs> Like basically any worksheet she gets, this little kid will like doodle it up. So she is loving this and um, she's actually picking up this book even when I don't have it assigned to her and asking if she can do it. And so for me, that's like a big win in my homeschool book. So um, she loves this book. I'll go to the pages she hasn't been through and show you just a little bit more. Um, later on, she'll be learning how to care for pets. So writing a schedule, writing um, a descriptive list of a schedule and planning, um, and then being able to like check it off like a checklist. So it's really going to get into just like those normal things that you want your kids to learn because once they become a teenager or even an adult, they're going to need all these skills, um, how to write um, nice letters, so on and so forth. So this looks very promising and I hope she continues loving it as much as she is right now. So that's Evan Moore real world writing. Um, and then her last choice was this book. She calls it Silly Sentences. Um, but she doesn't know that it's just a sneaky handwriting practice book because she hates handwriting practice. But I think because this is dressed up in really silly way of practicing handwriting, she's loving it. So she comes in here, she gets to pick each part of the sentence and then write her own silly sentence. So for example, a hungry hat has a helicopter, um, a handsome ham helped a hippo, for example. So she's been giggling through this and it's just really getting her to do some fun, silly sentences, and then secretly perfect her handwriting, which is already pretty neat, 
but um, I just like that they get extra handwriting practice. So this is definitely one of her favorite choices. Okay, so that would be it for third grade. And so let's get into our first grade options. Her least favorite thing has been the CLE mathematics. So I was really hopeful for this. I, um, I looked through it before I bought it and like all their sample pages. And I just knew that this looked like something that I would love. And I will say that I do love it. I think that it's teaching her everything she needs to know. Um, I think it's at a good pace. I think it has, um, the perfect amount of problems in a day. However, for some reason, she just doesn't like it. I don't know. She doesn't tell me what she doesn't like about it. She just doesn't want to do it when it comes up on her schedule. So for that, um, for that reason, it's her least favorite. Um, I do not love how it comes with a separate teacher's guide, um, only because I like to just be able to open one book and have all the instruction, um, to be able to complete each assignment. But however, these ones have literally like you have to have that teacher's guide to know some of the problems. Like for example, they have these story problems. Well, I don't know the story unless I have the teacher's guide. So I verbally have to tell her the story and then she has to figure it out. Um, as well as they'll give you examples of which numbers to dictate to her so she can sorted out into hundreds, tens, and ones, which this is easy. I could come up with my own numbers very easily on the whim. However, the story problems are a little bit harder and so on and so forth. So just throughout you, you have to know that if you're getting these books, you also need the teacher's guide to complete them. Okay. So that is her least favorite. Let's move on to her favorite. So in contrast, she loves the CLE learning to read units. Um, she's on her third unit now, and we just started this, I want to say less than a couple months ago. So, um, she's worked through about two and a half units very quickly because we're talking, we even took a Christmas break. So she just is loving these books. And I think it's just cause she loves English. She loves to read. She loves that she's learning to read more. Um, and she just gravitates towards anything that has to do with reading. So this was her quick. I let her skip some of these things because she doesn't love to just write the eye. She's already very strong at printing. Um, so I do let her skip some of those. But yeah, she just is loving this. So in contrast, we love the learning to read, the mathematics from Christian Light Education, not so much. Her next pick is Dash Into Handwriting. So I really love this. I think it's just so cute. I love all the artwork and I think she's drawn to it too because of the like whimsy artwork and the way that the characters look. And so I picked up the Danielian book one, two, and three. Um, in retrospect, I wish I had just gotten the basic print. Um, because she was already a strong printer before. And so even though she copies these pages in the Danielian fashion, um, she's still writing the majority of her stuff in regular print because she's just already been accustomed to that other printing style. Again, I let her skip some of these really repetitive pages. Um, so the ones that have actual words to copy or things like that have been ripped out. But I wanted to give you an example of what it looks like inside. They have these really cute, you know, trace the dots. A lot of times she wants to color them. Um, so again, most of those are all ripped out, but she just really is flying through this book. We've started book two already. Um, this is book one and I just wanted to show you an example. So that is her second favorite pick. Another one is this Kumon writing book. So I've had this in my cabinet of books for so long. None of my children ever used it. And so finally I pulled out, I'm like, oh, you're the last person in grade one and we need to use this. So, um, I'll just show you some of the parts she hasn't worked on yet. 
Um, and she just loves, she opens it, she does a page or two a day. And she just loves that she gets to, you know, draw the lines to match and underline the correct words, write in the words, fill in the missing blanks. So it's just, you know, it's easy work that she just loves because, like I said, she just gravitates towards anything reading and anything English. So this was her third favorite pick. It's really cute. She likes that one. Okay. So... That is it for each grade specific thing. I wanted to share our least favorite resource. And then after that, I'll show their most favorite resource. So these were all voted on by my children. So their least favorite resource is geology by the good and beautiful. So this was kind of a shock because um, we really like the good and the beautiful. We've used a lot of her um, their items, we've used math, we've used English, um, we've tried their typing, so we have a good repertoire with um, The Good and Beautiful. However, for some reason, they're just not really liking getting through this, and I don't know if it's because I'm just a little bit scattered, but or maybe they just like don't really love geology. So I make photocopies of each page because I didn't want to buy them each a separate copy um so we are probably uh, more than halfway through this um and we probably do maybe one lesson a week um but yeah they just they don't really love it i don't know and they're not really retaining a lot of the work that we're doing with it too so this has definitely been a miss in our homeschool and i think i'll get through it um i don't know when but yeah, it's just, it hasn't been a favorite favorite of ours. So that is the good and beautiful geology. Um, none of my kids are loving this. <laughs> okay. And then their all collective favorite thing we've done this year has been geography. And so this is really funny because it's also like the one thing that hasn't been uh, like there's been no prep involved or anything like that. So what I did is I thought, we haven't studied the 50 states. Let's just do that together, um, all, all three of them. So I went on YouTube and I scoured and looked for all the kid vlogs and the fun vacation videos and the state fact videos um, and fun songs that go along with each state. And so they're loving every week when I pull this out, like one or two days a week. We're focusing on one state and they get to watch all the videos and then they get to collectively fill out their state page. So they get to come in and these ones in particular have stickers. So they get to find the correct sticker, write in the information, um, all the capital cities, abbreviations, statehood, famous people from that state, which they love. They love Googling like who comes from each state. Um, and then they get to choose which interesting fact about that state they just gravitated towards in our videos that we watched. So this particular one, she loved the, the drive-in movie, I think began in New Jersey, or else it was probably just something that's like a really big hit or attraction in that state. So whatever it was, that's what she wanted to remember about New Jersey. And these junior state notebooks have been really really fun for them a lot of times I'll just um, print out the state flags and they'll glue it in here and then color it but sometimes like this daughter she just loves to doodle so she wants to <laughs> um, draw in her own picture and I just think that it's been really fun for them to do um, my oldest son I got him this exploring handwriting thinking that it would be really wonderful if he gets some extra handwriting while he's enjoying learning about the states and he does he he does it and it's not a problem but i think he does get a little bit jealous because he wants to be able to stick the stickers on and do all those fun things but he still comes in here he's practicing his handwriting and then he's filling out his own state fact page um, it's a little bit more in depth, so it's just good for him at his upper elementary stage. Although I will say that in retrospect, I wish I had gotten 
the state notebook that's not the junior they have one that's for older children and i think he would have really enjoyed that um but again this has been totally fine so those are our favorite and least favorite resources and last but not least i want to share our family read alouds so this has been our first read aloud Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. So this came about because we were studying through ancient Greece and they really loved hearing about all the Greek mythology. And so um, just like a natural um, thing that my mind went to was like, oh, the Percy Jackson, because I've talked about it with my son as maybe like a fun action type movie that he would be interested in. Um, but thus far he hasn't watched it. So I thought, oh, perfect. We'll just throw in these books. And um, so he started reading them and I would put them on the audiobook um, about three times a week. And while doing that, I would have my other little girl sit and just like color or do something. And um, my third grader actually got really interested in the reading. So now she has her own um, copy of the book and they watch there, I'm sorry, they listen together. And so they're both going through this one and they're really looking forward to watching the movie after to compare it to the novel. So this has been a really fun thing. Of course, it's completely fake and we get to discuss like all the Greek mythology and all the reasons why we believe different things. Um, but it's just been fun for them to see how funny people actually made up all these Greek mythologies and um, there's a whole backstory, so it's just been fun. We're working through the Waldoc Way, I wanna say. The Waldoc Way has a unit study on Greek heroes and myths. And so I'm not using it in its entirety, but I am pulling out like the comprehension worksheets for each chapter and um, little things like that. So she has some activities that go along with this book. Okay, so last but not least is our second family read aloud, and I'm really excited about this. Um, and that is C.S. Lewis's The Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe. So they, we have three different um, copies. Each of them have their own copy, and it's been fun to see like the differences too. Some of them have illustrations, some of them don't. Um, but in whatever case, they just love being able to follow along in their own book. Um, and we're just having a blast with this. This is another one I've never read, but I've always wanted to um, watch the movies and I hear great things about it. So we started this prior to Christmas thinking, oh, perfect. It's winter based and everything just kind of fell in place. Um, my kids have loved family reading time. I didn't know if they would, but I think they actually look forward to it. And we all just love curling up on the couch and reading together. Um, so that's been fun. And then also while we're working through this, I'm developing a literature guide to go along with it. So it's going to be a 17 week plan, um, on a four day schedule. So I'm doing it very slowly. We're doing one chapter a week, but I've paired it with um, vocabulary review, comprehension questions. Um, we're doing Bible studies because as you know, C.S. Lewis really um, touches on a lot of religious symbolism in his writing. Um, so we're using it as a jumping off point into a Bible study. Um, I've pulled many history unit studies, so we got to talk a little bit about World War II and so on and so forth. I have some science things that we've been able to talk about, like we talked about ice fishing, um, the, because Mr. Beaver is very good at that. And, um, so we watched a fun experiment on ice fishing and they're just really enjoying it and I'm having fun coming up with other ideas to kind of go along with it to make it more of an in-depth study rather than just reading, you know, chapter after chapter. We're really diving into it and um, enjoying the story. So um, I will have more info on this on my website as soon as it's complete. We're on chapter seven out of 17. So it'll be a little bit before I release this still, but keep your eyes open for this 
Um, and so with that, I want to just say thank you for listening. And hopefully I was able to talk about something that inspires you. Um, maybe something you can add into your studies to really enrich your homeschooling right now. So thank you again. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.